thinking about quantum gravity. Hi, my name is Tejinder Singh. I am a physicist working in Mumbai, India. I would like to share with you in this series of short talks my views on quantum gravity and how quantum foundations is related to trying to develop a quantum theory of gravity. So as I said, this is a series of elementary audio slides on my views and on my work on the search for a quantum theory of gravity. Uh, these talks are intended for uh, physics students, say at the PhD level, who aspire to do research in quantum gravity. And uh, you would need some basic working knowledge of quantum theory, quantum measurement problem, and general relativity up to say Einstein equations in order to be able to appreciate these slides. Okay. Also, I mean, you may not agree with what I'm going to say. I don't expect you to do that. But I do hope that uh, these slides will give you something to think about as you develop your own approach uh, towards quantum gravity. This is my working hypothesis, namely that the search for a better understanding and formulation of quantum theory will lead us to the sought after quantum theory of gravity. In other words, I do not want to quantize general relativity, but rather address certain puzzling and vexing issues within quantum theory. For example, the so-called problem of time, uh, namely that there should exist a reformulation of quantum theory, which does not depend on classical time. And the search for such a reformulation automatically seems to point to what a quantum theory of gravity should be like. So what I'm going to do is uh, divide uh, this set of talks into four chapters. Each chapter will have its own subsections. So in this uh, first video, I just give you an overview of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, chapter one, I call it quantum theory is the truth, but not the whole truth. Of course, we know that the theory agrees with every experiment that has been done so far. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the theory. Yet, there are some things about the theory, some features of the theory, which strongly suggest that uh, uh, quantum theory is an approximation to a deeper theory. That's what I mean by saying the truth, but not the whole truth. Chapter two, the whole truth is that quantum theory is approximate. I will point to work that has already been done and suggestions for new work uh, which uh, present quantum theory as an approximation to a more general theory. And in uh, chapter three, we will come to the conclusion that both quantum theory as well as the general theory of relativity, both these are emergent phenomena. Both are approximate theories coming from something deeper and that something deeper is uh, part of chapter four, namely the underlying theory from which quantum theory as well as general relativity emerge. That is the sought after quantum theory of gravity. Okay, so now about details of each chapter, uh, roughly each subsection is what I cover in one talk. So chapter one, as I said, quantum theory is the truth, but not the whole truth. Uh, 1a, uh, we will uh, emphasize that quantum theory has not yet been experimentally tested in all parts of the parameter space. In other words, the principle of linear superposition has been tested for small systems, but not for mesoscopic and large systems. And that's very important to highlight. Part b is the puzzle of uh, why we don't see positions, superpositions of macroscopic objects and the infamous quantum measurement problem that has been around ever since uh, Schrodinger wrote down his Schrodinger equation. 1c, uh, the peculiar nature of quantum non-locality. Uh, it's up to you to decide whether this is uh, telling us something new or not. For me, this definitely is an important signature that uh, something is missing in our understanding of quantum theory. 
then uh, one d what is probably the most important uh, unclear aspect of quantum theory according to me the so-called problem of time in quantum theory uh, one e the extreme dependence of the theory on its own classical limit and one f the physical meaning of the wave function so these are uh, points which i will talk about to give my picture of what is puzzling about uh, quantum theory suggesting that we need a generalization of the theory to get rid of these uh, problems okay chapter two uh, the whole truth is that quantum theory is approximate we address the questions that were raised in chapter one one a a possible resolution of the quantum measurement problem through what are now known as collapse models starting with the work of uh, Phil Pearl, Girardi, Rimini, Weber, Diozzi and others, uh, the so-called theory of spontaneous localization. I'll tell you a little bit about that. And then uh, 1b, uh, collapse models are phenomenological. Uh, what is their fundamental origin? Where do they come from? And uh, uh, part c, uh, a possible resolution of the problem of time. And this would gradually take us towards uh, the sort for quantum theory of gravity. 1D, a possible resolution of the non-locality puzzle. And 1E, an answer to this question, what is the physical meaning of the wave function? Okay, chapter three, uh, we start concluding that quantum theory and general relativity are both emergent phenomena. Uh, 3A, I would uh, tell you about trace dynamics and the emergence of quantum theory from trace dynamics. Uh, 3b, the idea that space-time and gravity themselves emerge from spontaneous localization, from collapse of the wave function. And uh, 3c, uh, this is a beautiful, uh, deep uh, and mysterious question, the similarities and differences between Dirac fermions on one hand and uh, classical black holes on the other. And the last and the fourth chapter, uh, namely the underlying theory from which quantum theory and general relativity emerge is the sought after quantum theory of gravity. Uh, 4a uh, was the connection between trace dynamics and non-commutative geometry. And 4b uh, to emphasize that uh, there are only two fundamental constants, Planck length and the speed of light and uh, for C that uh, Planck's constant is actually an emergent uh, feature which emerges when quantum theory emerges from the underlying theory and for D the emergence of Newton's gravitational constant so GR and gravity themselves are emergent. So roughly this is what I expect to cover in about 20 short uh, talks and this is a favorite uh, quote of Einstein for me, Einstein, 1936. He says, there is no doubt that quantum mechanics has seized hold of a beautiful element of truth and that it will be a touchstone for a future theoretical basis in that it must be deducible as a limiting case from that basis, just as electrostatics is deducible to the Maxwell equations of the electromagnetic field or as thermodynamics is deducible from statistical mechanics. I do not believe that quantum mechanics will be the starting point in the search for this basis, just as one cannot arrive at the foundations of mechanics from thermodynamics or statistical mechanics. It's a tribute to Einstein's genius that many of the developments that are taking place in quantum foundations and in quantum gravity over the last uh, three or four decades are actually pointing towards Einstein being right, namely that uh, quantum theory is an approximation to something else from which it should be deduced. And that something else is of a more general nature in terms of its principles and quantum mechanics emerges from that in a special limit. So that's all for today. Thank you for listening to me and I'll see you next time. Bye.